Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also encourage experienced painters to, to paint along with me. Um, today we're going to work on the second fire of our violets. This is my first fire. This is how my first fire came out. And I'm, I'm happy with this. This was uh, exactly what I wanted. And um, we're going to work on the second fire. Now, you know, I always do two at a time. And so here's what the second fire is going to come out like. So we're going to put them next to each other so you can kind of see where we're going. I'll pull back a little bit. So this is the one we did last week. And what we're going to do this week is we're going to add more depth to the leaves. We're also going to add more color to the flowers. We're going to add more flowers and we're going to add a background. So it, uh, and then we have the bottom of the box to do, and I'm not really sure um, how I'm going to do that. I've been trying a number of different ways. I've really been working on this one because I'd like it to look a little bit antique you know, so um, I, I think that's important. So I'm going to angle us down so that you can see what I'm doing, and we'll get started. Oh, the colors we're going to be using are um, blue-black. We're going to use that on this fire. You know my favorite color is blue-black, and berry. We're also going to continue to use the baby blue, the um, pink, whatever light pink you have, and a white. I have some chartreuse on my palette, a little bit of moss green. I don't know if I'm going to need the moss green, but the chartreuse, the warm brown green, and the shading green I'm going to be using. And then I have violet and royal violet, and you can use one or either of those kind of interchange interchangeably. So um, that's entirely up to you. Um, I tried this a number of different ways. And as you can see on the second fire that I did here, it looks like I did the background first, and then I did the leaves, and then I did the flowers, but that didn't work. So um, I found that the only way I can do it and hold it, because you, you know if you want to hold it up for you to see it, you have to do the background last, because I've got my hands on it all the time. Now, I do have one of those Lazy Susans. And uh, if you have a Lazy Susan, you can put this on the Lazy Susan, and then you can lean on the Lazy Susan as you work, and that makes it a lot easier. But for this particular application, it really doesn't work. So um, if you want to put your background on first, you certainly can, but you need to have it laying down somewhere because you're going to get your fingers all over it. Just trust me on this one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start to work on these leaves. And um, I'm going to use a combination of um, the uh, chartreuse and a warm brown green. And I'm just going to go around my violets very, very carefully. Now... Add a little more of this. I probably should start with the biggest one first. You have to be very careful. You're you're pulling it in to where the around the violets so that you have the shading there. And then you, of course you're going to feather it out a little because it gets kind of stodgy. You know, it gets too close to the flowers and it it it. Uh, kind of mounds up and then you just have this line of color. You don't want that. And then I'm going to add a little more here. I'm using the chartreuse because I used the chartreuse on the first fire. It'll just intensify it a little bit, but it'll keep that lightness to everything. And then I'm going to do my, my little edge here. I need a little more oil. Okay, let me do my edge here. And I'm going to, oops, I'm also going to do a little bit more down the middle. Pull that color over so it's more down the middle there. And then just feather it out very carefully. Yep, yep. Okay, you'll be able to see it better, I think, on this larger one, which is actually where I should have started. So we're going to do the chartreuse. I'm going to add a little shading to this one to make it a little darker. Shading green is a little darker than warm brown green, but it also has kind of a turquoise in it or a blue in it, so it does make things different. Here, I'm just, remember we talked about um, just putting the color on and leaving it. That's kind of what I want to do up here. 
because I want it to look more like those antique violets that I've seen in the past. And um, the antique ones, they have, they kind of have a, a blob of color here and a blob of color there, a wash of color here and a wash of color there. And I, I kind of like that look. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Oops. Clean off my brush a little. You see what I'm doing here? Now, you remember we talked last week about the fact that these uh, veins come this way, and then they all come from the same point, the main veins. Then the other veins, the um, secondary veins, all come off of that. And quite frankly, I don't know that I want to get into the secondary veins um, particularly with this um, smaller piece. You know, if I had a bigger piece, I might consider doing that. I'm working around this violet here and I'm putting a little color behind it. There wasn't any and I wanna make sure that I have it there. Now, the light's coming this way so I could actually make this side a little darker if I want to. And I'm just gonna you put the color on and then you lightly feather it to get the color the way exactly the way you want it. So I'm going to put a little more color in here just to make it more. Oh, there we go. Then we have this guy. This is the one that's folded under. Now I'm using just the chartreuse and the full load and the shading green side load. And I'm putting it putting my shading green along that middle. vein, just so I get it. And then I'm going to come up in here and cut into this top. Now here, if the light's coming this way, it is going to give you a shadow here. And it's also going to give you a little bit of a shadow that goes through on the other side, but the light's going to hit over here. So you're not going to want so much light, so much dark on the edge of these guys. You're gonna want the darkness up here because it's coming across this way. So this top leaf here is casting the shadow down. You know, when this time of year, when your flowers start to come out, um, one of the things you should probably do, and I'm thinking of actually doing this when ours get out, is start, if you haven't picked up the habit of sketching, you should go out and sketch the flowers in various stages as they come up. Um, but once they're up, you should also go and sketch. I'm using chartreuse now just to make the top. In fact, I'm going to go to a little moss green because it's a little too green for me there. Um, you should go and, and, and sketch them in various stages. And I think you, you'll have those available to you um, when... Um, your painting so that, for instance, now this is a good example right here. Let me, let me just uh, pull this back a little bit before I forget. This one's a good example right here. Who would have thought that a violet bloomed and could fold over like that? Well, that's something that I actually took some time and drew when I was out in the garden because I wanted to make sure that I knew the different ways that violets could grow. This one's another example here. And some of these, see how this one's partially open? This one just has a little bit. This one's partially open, this one. If you draw your flowers, if you draw your flowers in various stages as you go, you'll find that you'll have a nice repertoire. Kind of keep them on you know, maybe if you have a copy machine, you could, um, uh, or a printer, you could um, just uh, copy them as you go and just keep adding to the same page so that eventually you have a, a nice um, selection of different kinds of um, stages of the same flower and leaves. And that will really be helpful if you, when you start working on your own um, studies. Again, here I'm putting the dark down below. Can you, I'll come up real close so you can see that. And I'm just gonna feather it down because I like the way it looks. Just feather it a little bit down to the base. And then I'm gonna take a chartreuse with a little bit, and I know I'm using a big brush, so you may wanna step down on the brush. 
I, uh, like I said, I learned how to paint. And I always was told by my teacher to always paint with the largest brush I could. And I don't know that it always does me well because sometimes I forget and I'm at a point where I should switch brushes and I don't. Okay, but now I'm going to switch brushes. So I've done the upper part. You can see here, this is what we're going for. Okay. And now I'm gonna start on my flowers. And for that, I'm using this brush. Now, you can use a number four if you have one. I have a, where is it, a little pink one here that's got a pink handle. It's real easy to find. Let me show you my number four. This is my number four. This is actually one from, uh, it's a Jane Houston brush, and it's a French brush. And you see, this one has a squared off top. Can you see that when I hold it up this way? Yeah. And this one has a rounded top. And this is the one I prefer to use, but you can use the square if, you, if that's all you have. So um, I, I'm guilty of not having enough small brushes. So, <laughs> so I'm learning. Now we're gonna pretty much do like we did the last time. I'm gonna take the blue and I'm just gonna put it on the part of the flower that I want the blue on. You almost can't see it, can you? Let me let me work on this a little bit here. There we go. And then I'm gonna put the blue down at the base here. I, I still like to have blue on here because I think the blues and the pinks, they make purple. And I think it's kind of a nice uh, combination. Um, and it adds something, I think, to the purple when you add the purple. Okay, so I've got the blue. Now, I'm gonna do something a little weird. And it works for me, it may not work for you. I told you I have white on my palette. I'm dipping into the white full load on this, and I'm doing a side load of the violet. I'm doing that because I don't wanna mess up that blue but I want to get the purple in there. I'm working on this one right here. I'm going to pull it down, flip it around. I'm always pulling towards the center of these flowers. White and, and violet. And the reason I'm doing that is so the blue continues to show. Oops, I need a little more violet here. Let me back up. This guy didn't get enough violet. Huh, come here. Yeah, you have to play with it. And then I'm gonna do the apron of the violet down here with the purple side load. And I'm gonna clean that out. And I'm going to come back with a nice liner. This is one of my little liners. Oops, here, you can see it better. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to use the liner. Um, I'm going to start with uh, using the liner in the white. And I'm just going to put a little white on the tops of these. just so they separate a little bit from that. Um, right here kind of got mucky, if you can see, with the green behind it. So if I take a little bit of white, hang on, I have to get pretty close, and put it there, it'll pull that out a little bit, make it a little cleaner so you can see it. All right. Um, I have a violet here, I have violets here, so I'm just going to keep doing the same old, same thing with them. The violets are pretty, pretty standard. Right now I'm using a pink on this guy, a little pink down below. And then I think for something different, I'm going to go with a little berry. Let me show you how the berry looks with the pink. The berry is very pretty with the pink. Oops, 
Oops, this one's not quite the way I want it. Oops, let me come up here so you can see. There. And then we're going to put some berry around the bottom here. And I'm going to put a little tit of it right here. And I want it to be a little darker right behind here so that that stands out a little more. Okay. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is this one over here. I'm going to make him blue. Oh, actually, yeah, I think I'm going to make him blue. And you'll see in a minute why I'm making these outer ones blue. There's, there's a method to my madness. I'm going to go through and create those extra leaves that you saw. Oops. Extra, I'm sorry, extra petals. See the extra petals around there? And um, the, the petals, I think, I don't want them to take away from the flowers I have there. So I'm going to be adding the petals in that um, berry. So I want to do more of these in the blue so that they sort of stand out against that. But again, I'm going through and I'm just adding purple on the underside of these and up in here. I'm leaving this center section open because I have to put yellow back there. Um, and I'm going to be adding a little purple over on this guy too. Okay. And real quick, I'm just going to do this section today so that you can see it. Uh, you basically would do the same thing down here before you add the background. You would put the blue, the green in here and put the um, colors on your flowers that you want. This guy I'm going to put a little, oh, that's way too blue. Did you see how much blue I got there? No, that's way too blue. A little blue, and I'm just going to leave the blue on this one because you will see as we put in the background colors, if I make it any darker than that on these guys, they won't, the purples will take away from the background. You won't see these other petals that I'm putting on as easily. So I'm just putting the blue here. Okay. And then I have this guy down here. And he's another one where I'm going to put a little, oh, little blue on him. A little blue up here. Ah, ah, come here. Now, these blues, there was purple underneath. So the purple mixed in and it really helped. So that's why I left them. But this one down here, there's not enough purple to mix in, so I'm adding purple to it. And it's all your, whatever your aesthetic is. If you like it light, leave it light. If you like it dark, oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's not always easy to see how I'm painting here. I'm adding the purple in now. If you like it dark, then you need to add more purple to it. Oh, come here, you. Sometimes your purple doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, and this one up here, I think I'm just going to add a little purple to because it's mainly blue and I don't like that. So I'm just going to add a little purple. Do you see how I did it on the side there? And a little purple on this side here. This is one of those that's just peeking out and a little purple right here and you notice I turned the plate from here to here in order to do the color on this side. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Don't know why that's there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my liner, put a little mixture of warm gray and shading gray on it and I'm just going to clean up these veins here. Sometimes when you pull through, you don't even need to do it. There's enough paint there to do what you want to do. Okay. So that's what I've done just to add a little, and oh, I might add a little something right here. And the reason I'm doing it now is because once I get the background on, I'm not going to be able to lay my finger like I am on the tile 
and do these kinds of little delicate things. So you have to think about what order you're doing things in. Here I'm just, I'm sort of scalloping the edge of this because I like that. I'm going to do a little here too. I'm using a shading green because it's a little bit darker and it'll, it'll show up a little better. And maybe just a little down in here. I'm not going to get a lot out of the edges of this because I'm going to be putting the brown, uh, the brown, I'm going to be putting the, um, the background color on. And I'm not going to do a lot on these, um, these little stems because the background color is going to mess them up and you'll see. Okay. So now it's time to do the background color. And I know, like I said, oh, I'm sorry. I should uh, get my number one here. I want to put the centers back in these flowers. Um, you can use mixing yellow. You can use canary yellow. You can use um, any of the different yellows that you have as long as it's a nice light yellow and it's not going to fire out too much. Because you do want that yellow to be in there and show up. Okay, so you see how I did the yellow there? I would also take, and I don't have this on my palette either, but I would take my fine liner and put a little red dot in the middle. And I can show you on here. You see how I did the little red dot in the middle there? Especially on this one. And I think it just makes them look a little, I don't know, better. kind of focuses you to the, the center of the flower, which is what you want to do. All righty. I'm going to take my number 10. If you have a larger brush and you want to use that, that's fine. And I'm going to do the background on this with my blue-black. Now, you have to be very careful because you already have all this done. But I found that if I don't do it this way... Um, I end up not being able to do a nice job on the flowers and things because I, I'm, I'm leaning on the plate to do everything like this. So, so I'm going to put a little blue-black back here in the back, if you can see. Mm -hmm. I think you can. I'm going to put a little blue-black down in here. And this is going to be more of a, just a, a general background, nothing too fancy. So you're going to put it on, and then you're going to work it so that it's feathered out. Try to get it around the things that you painted. If you have to go over them, no big deal. You can always repaint them. So now I'm going around putting my background in and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the background and this is the actual fun part. I want to get this background smooth because I don't want to do this twice. Although I can't tell you how many times I did it on that uh, piece that I showed you where I had the second fire. I must have wiped that off about six times because I couldn't get it the way I wanted it and I knew what I wanted but I just couldn't get it that way. But, you know, China paint you can wipe off as you go. So and You're going to go all the way around. You're going to try to leave a section in the center. This is a technique uh, one of my teachers taught me. You take your uh, finger that you're going to use, and you rub it on your jeans. And then you tap, and it will not leave any fingerprints on there because you kind of already... Uh, took the fingerprints off by rubbing it on your jeans. It kind of makes your your finger kind of um, swell a little bit or something. Anyway, it, it does take the, the finger paint, and then you can do it. But you want the middle of this to be light. You can use a silk. You can use, um, you could also use one of those sponges if you get too much paint in the middle. But okay, so there I've got my, my blue on. I don't want to waste a lot of time on this because I will go all the way around. It will look like this when, when I'm done. And you see how much white I left in the center section? And I just wanted you to see that you do leave the white in the center section. But um, 
going back to this little brush that's the rounded one, uh, I you could do it with the um, number four, but a rounded brush would be better if you have it. I got this one from Burgett Porter, and it's one of those that she uses uh, for her type of painting, her old world type of painting. I'm going to dip it in the berry, full load, and I'm going to start adding little background little background violets just anywhere I think they should be the secret is to add a few at a time And make sure that they look, you try to make them like violets. So here's my tile. Let me show you what I mean by that. A violet looks like this, right? It has one, two, three, four, five, right? But we're only doing this much. So you're going to be adding it like this. I'm sorry, I don't have enough oil on there. But you're going to be adding it like this. A little curvy sometimes, not a little curvy sometimes, but that's what you're looking to do. And that will really help in adding in these little things. And you're going to add them wherever you think it needs it. And just keep turning because that's the secret. You're going to get, as you go to the edges, you're going to get fewer and fewer of these. Okay, so then you hold it back, you look at it, and you think, hmm, do I like that? Okay, if I do, that's great. Do I need to add a few more? Yep, I think I need to add a few more in through here. And you want them going different directions. That's the whole point to moving this. And I think I want a few up in here. You want a couple that just sort of stand out by themselves. Okay, I think, I think that's about enough. I've added enough. Um, I may want to go a little crazy over here and just put a few more of these little guys up in here. And then I'm going to take my liner and I'm going to go through and correct the stems. So anywhere that there's a stem that I need to add, there was a stem down here that I don't have. Um, this stem here kind of got lost, so I'm going to redo it. And you're just going to go through and add back in the stems so that oh, that was a little heavy handed. So if that happens, you just correct it. And then I'm going to clean up this. This guy here is way, way too dark. So I will clean him up. And then just add a little more here. And then you're going to go through with your number one or your number whatever. And now I'm just going through and adding a little bit of the green to the top of these little buds on the side. And then if you want to, on the final end here, just you can take your, your white and you can go around and you can accent a few of these if you want. I love white. I use white all the time. Okay, so that's where we are. This is it. I Like I said, I would still put a little red dot in the middle there. This is the second fire, second fire from that I did before this we started today. And this is the second fire painted for you. And then we still have the bottom of the box to do. And the bottom of the box is not very, uh, here it is. The bottom of the box is not very deep on this one. On the other one, it's about an inch deep. 
So I'm debating what I want to do with these um, to make them go with the top. So I want to make the sides go with the top, but I think I want to add more color to the sides. So I'm going to have to play around this week and come up with some. So we'll be back uh, next week and uh, we'll be finishing up our violets. Alrighty, thanks and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.